I think it's bad if you're against a matchup that doesn't look so good, but hypothetically, mm-hmm. if they can pressure we hard of the lane, then it's not terrible. But otherwise, it just feels like your mid-game impact is weaker than most offlane heroes would be. So that's why I don't have a huge amount of faith in it. But mm-hmm. cows are not milked once a day, they're milked two to three times a day, and that is what determines how early a cow needs to be milked. They ah, milk them dang. later in the evening, they can be milked later in the morning. Vice versa. I feel like I'm learning something right now. So now I learned more from you just now than I did listening to that entire draft analysis. I'm kidding. As we go into this game, I'm actually super excited about this offlane out because really? I know 30 that seconds these to European players, they study the NA Pops. And just the other day, uh-huh. I had a rank 300 guy uh-huh. rush tags for me uh-huh. on offlane out and just feed it to me. It was so far. It felt so good. You get the stats from it now. So not only do you get the Ags upgrade, but you got a Troll Warlord, you got a Void Spear, you got two pretty damn good Ag Scepter carriers on your team. So uh, let's ignore that they might be out. Oh, we can't fight in this Azus spray, actually. No. I was thinking about this. One of the okay. most potent nice Shadow Shaman killing. combos is Tidehunter right now because of the Gush minus armor. And that is four minus armor. And since they realize that's a potent lane duo, why not Acid Spray for the four minus armor in the offlane? I don't think Weehawk could actually do what he wants to do in terms of bullying 33 do, through that damage output. Like, the physical damage alone is so high. No, I will agree. I think this this combo is actually going to be really potent. And it'll be interesting to see that Alk is able to play a lane against uh, one of his classic nemesis in, uh, in Ursa. I guess things really do change. And... I see nothing. Yeah, Ursa used to be really powerful level one, and then they nerfed the crap out of early level Fury Swipes. So I think that being the case, Ursa's the same hero against Alk as he always was once you get like level five-ish. But before then, I think Alk should have no problem getting getting his foot off the ground here as uh, Fiverr is going to block the camps. The panel did talk about how Kuroki could do a really good job of deterring this aggression, but notice how Fiverr is blocking the small and 33 blocked the large. So they are fully aware of this and doing exactly what they need to do to get the start they need to talk. Yeah, willing to put his uh, body on the line. Fiverr has a decent amount of damage, but uh, 33. 33? He's got to be careful here. Start charging up the stun. He'll get it to max out. And now that the Shadow Shaman is here, Weeha, he maybe has to just uh, go back to his tower, pop that healing salve out of his backpack and heal up, because that's a lot of damage. Is that a build on Alchemist? Uh, obviously, yeah. 33 has probably played this more than I have. I just feel like you don't have enough mana to use these spells. He's already out of mana. Minute 40 into the lane. Uh, I believe he's also going to get uh, an early bottle. Oh, right? man, they just and got some of that first blood going. going. Oh, he's actually yeah, going to he's, he's, Yeah, he's already got the early bombs flying out to him. Huh. I'm very confused. Is he going to have to go base? Is he electing to stay here? He has the mango and a sage's mask because the style of the shadow is out of Really? Is that okay. going to let that middle tower Nine. full? He's got a fairy fire. He's okay. A bit close call. I think they could have just chilled a bit here in this lane and kept acid spraying it out because Ursa can't fight into you. But instead, that is not what's happening. And now the big camp has spawned due to the death of Viver and 33 being low. Suddenly, this might be a complete disaster top. We'll have to see. I think it only gets worse as the levels for both heroes get accrued. Oh, an intel from the trees. A surprise opener there manages to get a very big kill. And uh, it makes this top lane look and even he's worse. Miracle. Miracle. 33. He's going to have to juke upwards because Weeha, he's below him. They know where he's at. He's going to TP back Dyer's to the base. Has some oh, Brian, this, is, uh, this feels like one of those things that you've only practiced once or twice, you know? Because they, they, I mean, you're right. Them choosing to fight this Ursa has made Ooh, this lane Dyer's totally spiral out of control for them. Impressive and amplitude, really. Yeah. They just have to stick to the discipline of shoving in the lane and blocking the camps. I think that was going to work really well for them. I'm very surprised they differentiated from that game plan. Because the out got eight CS in lane, and now he's gotten like zero cents. So I'm not sure what. 
they are trying to make happen that I'm not understanding here. Hey, 33 is back, and just like that, Fiverr is being uh, immediately pressured. <laughs> He's probably going to have to leave lane or probably will get killed out of this lane. As uh, once again, we're just left with one man solo against two. They just continue to cycle heroes in and out from this aggression between Curl and we Miracle. He is going straight Ending Scepter, though. On 33, Brown Boots Axe Scepter queued up, so he understands. This Troll Warlord Aghanim Scepter is going to be incredibly cool. Maybe the Void Spirit Axe? I'm not sure. Oh, nine. He was really hoping to dodge that impale. Fortunately, Miracle's on a TP coming in. As uh, he did want to strike just a little bit towards the tail end of that. Uh, managed to keep his regeneration in his bottle, so he's going to be... Take notes, guys. If you want to play Morphling, you have to be willing to sit at 1 HP while you're chasing people in order to uh, fully optimize the hero's damage output. That is why I, with my boomer hands, no longer play this hero as Kuroki. Who's killing who here? Well, they seem Wait, like the 33 is not killing either one of them because he split up his spells. Uh, I thought he was going to just all in and say, okay, support for support. That would have been a pretty big kill if they got Kuroki there, because he would have gotten two earn charges. Yeah, but and he might have gotten uh, level four in time for the bounty gotcha. rooms instead. Oh, maybe all the bounties are going to go to Nygma here as the, they're going to battle out the Nyx Assassin Beastmasters bottom lane. The positive is they are doing very well for Tundra bottom lane. They are 27 and 9 to the 14 and 2 of the Beastmaster. Troll is one of the best lane counters in the game, if not the best. So the rolling axe, this chance on all the physical damage. The high armor against the physical damage. Not actually gets level six before Mirror. Which is interesting in and of itself due to the fact that he is zero and one while Morphling while Miracle is the one that got the kill earlier. Yeah, he's got ten more CS. Like he doesn't have that many more denies, but he does have ten more CS. Uh, Morphling just missed out on uh, a bit of experience. Yeah, maybe GH being in the mid lane a couple times just soaked a couple creeps, and that's the difference maker, but yeah. it is peculiar. As they are really trying to pick on nine here. Weehaw feels perfectly fine top. The problem with what happened top is it allows the rookie to do the equity ball. So the fact that nine just got a kill there is so huge because I've experienced this playing against the likes of Dubu where he wins a safe lane and then he just runs at you in every other lane with this enchantress. So if they can fend off this early aggression, the disaster top lane isn't as nearly as bad as it would be otherwise. GH, nice little sidestep there. Doesn't hit by the stroke of fate, nor the remnant. Still gonna die, but it, uh, it's gonna cost Nine so much of his time here. The rest he has to do this stuff. stuff. Top lane, there is net zero pressure coming out from 33, so there has to be a lot of space being made in the other two lanes. And at least they've kind of just abandoned him and decided we're gonna play around our strong cores. As long as they can shut down the momentum of the Beastmaster and the Enchantress early Jack game, Radiant's then this Alchemist about should be able to get an Ag at a decent time. But the problem is you are dealing with an absolutely free farm, uncontested Ursa. And that is not... That is not something you necessarily want to be dealing with scared. with like Radiant's 18 minutes tower. in the game, I'd say, when you get the Battle Fury plus the next item. It does have the treads. Yeah, I, I, where does this Alchemist go? I feel like this Ursa uh, is back to the drawing threat. board, Cap. Back to the drawing board. Right. Well, what happened to all that promise of uh, European? Nah, nah. He's gonna get this Ag Scepter. His teammates gonna carry him. Oh, okay, okay. He started leveling the Greebles' greed. Void Spirit's already Whoa, killing spree. Oh. Bit, but suddenly he's gonna get injected 4,200 net worth, and uh, he's gonna be ahead of the track instead of behind it already at that stage. So what's the timer on this Ag Scepter for 33? I'd give it like 16 minutes based on how bad it started, something like that. Team in power rooms coming in. Miracle hoping it's top. It's not, it's bottom with Illusion Root. GH is holding that one for him. GH has been playing with uh, pretty much no experience. Oh, Zen really? still He's level dominating two, and now. Girl, He's dominating. Who's just barely I'm level three, goes down again. Nine on a dominating. But my question, Cap, is if you were reviewing an Overwatch kit uh -huh. and you didn't know the MMRs or names of any of the players and you saw 33, what would you do? 
Oh, listen, I, I am a man who is down. Oh, is he gonna get it? Is he gonna get it? Oh! But no net. No net! Oh, dear. Let me just say, I'm down for anything, oh, all right? In, in NA, okay. we have techies players, uh, who, who, you know, techie spammers, I should say, who, uh, who try and make mid-techies work. And you know what? I've won with them. So, you know, I'm under the, the no-tail philosophy. Anything can Just, uh, so, things, some things don't work very well. What if you had the full context of this guy 10th picked out? You know, it was the last pick <laughs> for the team. And then you see top. The marker is literally in the draft time. It's just, you just go immediately to a last pick alchemist and you look on the other you side. You got the last pick alchemist and then you show the waiting stage, but nothing more. You don't show the acceptors, you just show the waiting stage, you know? Could we tilt the court case in a biased manner enough to get him convicted here? I, all I'm gonna say is that if people really want um, to get successful reports, they gotta be smarter about their reports. They gotta do what you're talking about. Good. Yeah. It's all about the facts you present. Hello? You can, lie can anyone hear me? It's a killing spree Jack over here. Nigma has now elected to pick up the safe lane. Speeder's already dipped out, though. They're looking for Aiken. He's in trouble if he oh. gets chain netted. Well, body blocks. So far, he's he been kind of lucky Aiken's here and uh, actually cool. picks up a haste rune he's at home. the bottom lane. Doesn't get netted whatsoever. Radiant just for the uh, Skeeter's just not feeling Radiant's it, man. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. work on those procs. Last game he was playing PA, now he's playing Troll. He's clearly got practice on these proc heroes that rely on Jeff thinks getting Radiant's that little bit of RNG to help secure kills. And he's, Peter, he's looking rusty so far. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Yeah, poor guy. Left his team down uh, in game one with that non-BKB usage, and now non-ensnaring. 33. Okay, so the real question, Cap. Who gets the first axe? Is it Void Spirit or Troll Warlord? I mean, is the cleanse really that good this game? I feel like the silence is Dyer's more powerful. Top tower is under attack. Yeah, I can get behind that too. It's probably the Void Spirit, but you don't usually want the Ags before the level 15, right? Yeah, that would be true. And I would also Radiant say, I feel like point. Yules into Ags Dyer's top is a little bit more natural. Skeeter's still going to be able to run him down here. We has already popped us in rage, and he does get stunned up by that ink. Dyer's top yeah, tower he hops under out attack. of that wards, but he's not going anywhere. Chained down by Skeeter. Biber's probably going to be dying to the boars and the Necronomicon. That's a huge in. kill. Dyer's top tower. They forced out war? They killed this free farming Ursa? Like, he was number one net worth on Team Nigma. And I've played this matchup. Nick. Dyer's top tower. Ursa tower's versus under Troll sucks. Like, as the game goes on for Radiant's Ursa. Radiant's bottom like, tower. You is don't want to be the Ursa. You kind of get forced to run away consistently as Nine is being hyper aggressive yeah. in the top lane. Forcing out a TP. Might have gone a little bit too deep. Yeah, he's uh, got five seconds for that astral step. His remnant's coming up, so it looks okay. Six space, man. This is this is actually so much space. Yeah. Because you are effectively farming a void spirit or a troll with Grievel's greed, right? Like that's effectively what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you got to find some way to make a greedy lineup like this work. And, and Tundra, once again, are going around a strategy of being on Radiant's side and playing for their triangle. And it's working out okay for them. I mean, they're... Uh, I, I don't really know how to read net worth lead because it's not an alchemist. It, like, it's an alchemist game, but it's a three-position alchemist game, so I don't This is know not an alchemist game. Sindarin would not call this an alchemist game. This but his definition a... of an alchemist game is a game with an alchemist in it. Radiant's Ryan. top tower yeah. is under attack. Is this or is this not a game with an alchemist in it? That, I can't argue oh. that. And it's an alchemist but, game. But if the... But, I got nothing. I actually can't argue this. I got nothing. No response from me. All right. The well, net worth isn't going build. on the ALK. So, yeah. you know, the net worth, the, that, like you said, it's pretty misleading when you think about an Alchemist Radiant in the game. Have scanning so it's not a normal Alchemist game, even though it's got an Alchemist in the game. I think that would be Cinderin's professional now. As Bybers, he's got wards for top. If they can manage to get this tier one, it looks like. It's already pretty low. They might have to drop the wards. They're being a bit... Greedy here, yeah. but no vendetta for GH. Yeah. Instead, the tower looks like it's gonna get denied. 
dire denied their But they may catch the supports on their way out here. They're going to drop the ward instantly, catch the Nyx assassin. Great use of an observer ward to be able to spot this, but uh, unfortunately didn't chain the disables well enough. Uh, didn't have his orchid yet. He just got it delivered. That's rough. Well, 33. He's got the Axe Scepter. I, I estimated 16 minutes, but he's way ahead of my schedule. 14 minutes despite how bad that lane was. Yeah, I mean, he, he's been able to, to stack up the Ancients constantly. And I feel like uh, Enigma haven't been putting the same kind of pressure that they were in uh, game one of invading this triangle and trying to catch this guy in 33 making a break for it right now. Grab that point booster, hand it over to nine. He suddenly got 1,500 health. Ag Scepter Orchid for Void Spirit at 14 minutes. Usually you get to choose between those two, but he's got both. Yeah, how do you even... Did I mention you get the stats? Nine. He's gonna be able to go for the Void Spirit. He's gonna be silenced for Whoa, Whoa, make a kill. Uh-oh. 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 Uh-oh.
the one that's farming up a storm of life, but actually go for a beat and be rather than before the storm in the option. E-Blade done a miracle, maybe that was what triggered him to do so. Even if you are able to dispel it with your whirling axes, still that's a big opening. That's a big, big opening and almost enough to kill him, but not quite. Shotgun combination. That axe after raw HP. Yeah. Last patch, he would have died there. That is true. Yeah, Void Spirit is normally rather squishy. You catch him with one disable, very likely he's dead, but with an early agony except this, man. He's also got the Nether Shock, so even more effective oh, yeah. HP against that Morphling Burst. As the Ursa Beastmaster, yes, it's a lot of physical. It seems like that minus three armor might be a bit dangerous for him, but the burst damage he's experiencing is mostly going to be the Morphling and the Nyx Pure damage from Vendetta. So as long as he doesn't get caught by Roar, which is... Probably means he's gonna die anyway. And then this nether shawl will make his survivability against these pickoffs drastically higher. It's pretty much saving his life there. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. All right, they're just gonna go for a uh, roshan and straight here's a fortification up. From Radiant. Yeah, they see Beastmaster bottom. You can either elect Dyer, to shut down that friends. pressure or just take an objective of your own. And the acid spray minus armor. I mean, the sad part is, it looks like Nygma are going to try and, and put a stop to this Roshan, but they're way too slow to get here, so they effectively do not. He doesn't get to power. take that tier 2 bottom or anything. Looks like he's going to try and poke at the mid tower just a bit with some things, but otherwise, that was totally free Roshan for Tantra. And they need opening here. They're going to try and Up, but nine, Watch this he is being hunted right now and is out of astral steps. Gets up to the ground. They no longer want to chase him, though. They just want to take this mid tower. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Okay, that was a pretty, pretty important fight for Nigma there. This Aegis for Void Spirit could have been a pretty serious momentum shift in Tundra's favor, but now. He does have to be wary of the Nyx Assassin on the map since he doesn't have that second life, but he sees him. He misses the rivet though. And instantly TPs. Is it soon enough though? <laughs> it's not even close. He had that calculated. Uh, I was Look at Kuroki right there. holding the wall. There was nine creeps top, and he was just holding the creep wave outside of tower range until Miracle respawned. That's a G. Wow. I wish I had a Kuroki. Yeah, we all wish we had life but sadly there's only one brand in the future that might not be a limitation with you know Brian you ever think you could have made it pro if you just had a, a clone of, of four more of you and you just uh made not four more of me but if I had like a puppy and a karaoke and maybe like a Zai and mm. you know like a Anisha I, I think I could probably take it I, I don't think I'm too heavy. I'd probably make like fifth place at the major or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just let just give me work. like razor safe lane, and I just won't feed. Okay. Already one step ahead. Yeah. All right, I can make that joke because they won that game. I I'm can make that joke <laughs> because they won the game. I love we I was baiting you in Twitch chat on that one. Yeah. <laughs> that one was like so low hanging that there's just no way you. Yeah, I, I, it was pretty much already in my head. Not plucky. 8 to 13, 22 minutes in. A very even net worth game, but as Brian was kind of alluding to earlier, I, we're not really sure what that means with the three alchemists. Is that bad for Tundra because they have an alchemist on their team and even net worth is usually bad for that? Is it fine because he's giving away these Aghanim Scepters is uh, Skeeter. Well, it's going to be real bad if he gets caught here before his BKB is picked up. Fortunately, yes, he had the game read to back up just in time. Fada with his one-man smoke stroke of fate play. Uh, kills one creep wave before he has it. Jex thinks I always see those tower situations in pro matches and I'm like, does he realize he was half a second from just dying right there? Like, does he realize it? I know he knows Radiant's he had to get out. Under attack. But are they at all 
fully aware of how close that actually was. I don't know. Did Radiant's bottom tower just I would just have fall? to guess. Don't answer that. Dyer's top tower. No, nobody should be, be leaving it to that close. Yeah, I have to imagine and the awareness is there, but Dyer's you don't intend top to be tower that close. Under. As 33, as the factory, it's it's producing. We've got another Axe Scepter. Pump it out the second Axe Scepter, but maybe it's a tad too late here. The uh, initiation is oh, already oh, 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 You better hold on to your hat. It's a big one. It's really that That's big. Five, so he's five, immediately going to be e bladed up. It's just no nice to pump it anymore. anymore. He's going to be able to kill. He's going to be able to kill. Skeeter. Very nicely played by Miracle, granting that double kill. And now, maybe even a little bit more, so they're going to dive on into this. 33, trying to curl it back, slowly but surely. Whoa, we're initiating the killing. Oh, yeah, he's trying to kill. kill. Miracle, as they look to take down this tier two. That Ag Scepter from 33, if it had it's been like 10 seconds sooner, that E Blade on the troll during his ultimate would have been dispelled. And Miracle might have died. So that was really close. And uh, really well played by Nigma to capitalize on beating the offlane alchemist second out uh, Ag Scepter timing. I'm sure they were going for it. Yeah, they seem to know it like clockwork. Like the back of their hands. I mean, to be fair, I will they, say, they, they did play offlane Alk, I think. Yeah, they yeah. On they, no, they absolutely did. And I'm sure they. Oh my god! Uh, before that, so I'm sure he's they're now well dominating. aware of what kind of he's timings they're looking Rick. at here as uh, Tundra are going to start pushing out as they pick off at bottom lane by Major Miracle. Tyrus. He's not here in this fight. Tundra, they got to get something Wait, done no, here, but on. it's taking so he's long just to kill Kuro of all people. Skeeter, he's going to go ahead and cleanse off that slow from the Necronomicon. He's going to start running oh, down by the top of Miracle. He's now back into play. He's going to get kill now. Kill bottom lane. He's here. The water. And He's hoping to be able to get a kill onto nine. Jump away. TP out, night nine. But we are almost there for Tundra, it feels like. We're just about to get that BKB on the troll with his Aghanim Scepter. I feel like at that point, BSJ, they, they have to start winning fights. My waters rise. Yeah, I think I want to take a screenshot of this net worth distribution. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's I don't think I've... I've ever seen anything like this, man. The team that's losing has the two highest networks and, over here, and an Radiant's offlaner top that's tower. bottom <laughs> I, I, ju I just want to say, comical. like, I feel like this Dyer is a bit disrespectful to so 33 skills as a player. Radiance top tower? Like, this guy is amazing, but, like, I could do this job of hitting creeps and pumping out Academ Scepters for Trust other me, people. if you need somebody to feed in lane and then farm all game, I'm your man. Dude, I'm down. <laughs> like, yeah, BSJ, he's ready to go. BKB going to be fought by Skeeter. Hex goes out. Double Jackals. What a big hit. Nigma definitely overstepping their bounds Radiant's in this fight. It's not gets himself stuck on with the cliff. A little bit of RTZ. But it's fine. Oh. Skeeter will hand it for you, or maybe he He's won't. He's not going to live. Oh, no. He's going to get away because Nine was not able to help out with that fight. Oh, dear. With all that, they get it next. That looks so good. Yeah, that's soul bind into double shackles. It was beautiful. And then where did Nine go? He just astral stepped himself straight up there. Morty, who, who oh, was that? Might take it, up. it was pretty tight. Yeah, yeah when Ursa, Troll, Morphling, these heroes, you just have to commit 100% of your damage onto them. Make sure they do not live with a sliver because if Troll gets his ulti off, Ursa gets his ulti off, Morphling gets that attribute shift. Suddenly, this target that is 100 HP is just gonna live. Then they yep. just get a free kill on Grimstroke. Map control seems like it's still in favor of Nigma, as that's the 10 second BKB timing for Skeeter. That's a pretty important timing for him to, to hit. And All right, they're actually to, uh, going for the Ag Shard now on 33. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's time to diversify our production. We're gonna yeah. start uh, pumping out some certain potions for people, which uh, that is very good for a troll, no doubt. What's the cooldown on it? Like 30 seconds? Can't say that mine doesn't actually say on the skills. Gotta love the the beta tooltips here. <laughs> They smoke up. Do they see it with the hawk? They do. Nigma is fully aware of 
of what's going on here. Diet, our scanning friends. As they scan to see what direction they're coming from, or maybe that's a radiant scan. That is a radiant scan. Check scan. to see if they're uh, up there on the, the triangle. 35 seconds. I actually think that was a dire scam based on the cooldowns. It looks like they wanted to know if they're getting wrapped off from behind. Or Holy crap, Rick, he's unstoppable! Oh, they're going to be blocked in by the wolves. That's actually a really nice play from Fiverr. That slows down Weehaw entirely. And the shotgun going off. Nine looking to be able to execute somebody on the back line here. Nice double ash. Oh my god, Gordy. He's been boxed because he's clicking the right now. I thought there was no way the Miracle could just dive in while uh, the rest of his team was focusing on nine, but I guess I'm totally wrong. That's ridiculous. That's really much Own of a factor because he's given away 9,000 net worth. Yep. He's actually bought the Ogre Axe. Was that a mistake? Was he trying to just buy an item before he died and he thought he had the Axe Shard gold? That might have been what happened there. As he just has a random Ogre, ogre Axe now. Radiant structures are fortified. Do Radiant huh. bombs their middle tower to fall? Well, I gotta say, I would just say this is not what I would deem a normal Alchemist game. Oh, I... I love to hear what you call this game. Commit would have been a big ink swell, but everybody was still pretty healthy. So, Tundra. Uh, yikes. This is. I just have not seen this success. I was expecting something big timing. You know, with the, ag the Aghanim Scepter on the Void Spirit, I was like, okay. He did some work with that, felt alright. And then I was thinking, okay, BKB Ags on Troll. This is where. The vision all comes together, and we have this big swing of momentum, and Tundra look really strong in fights, but they just don't. They have a lot of, like, anti-heroes on Enigma, though. That's the gotcha. problem. You put all your net worth on the two guys, and you're against Ursa, Beastmaster, Nyx Assassin, Morphling with an E-Blade. It's really hard for two cores to carry this game when they're the only ones with any semblance of network. Because at this point, Nick can kind of have to ignore everything else. That, that is a factor in how much impact carries will have later on in the game. If you feel like you can just ignore the offlaner, for instance. Like, you don't have to go on that offlane Tide or Mars because you're scared of the team fight. This Alchemist is those Ag Scepters. So by going on the Troll and going on the Void Spear, you're effectively initiating on two targets at once. Radiant's getting are. friendly with Dyer's close and tower. Uh-oh, monster kill. Oh, 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 let the factory pump it out. Come on now. I mean, he's looking Here, at another Aghanim Scepter too, but like, is a Grimstroke Ags really going to change this game? No, nah, no, nah, it's his own Ags so that he gets 75 damage and 9% spell amp or whatever it is. Well, uh, a little bit of anti there, but it'll still be enough to Radiant's top tower is under attack. Huh. It's so hard to play carry against Nyx's ass and Shadow Charm, man. You just, you met, you don't pop your BKB, they land that instant disable with the carapace and the hex, here, and then you just die to zero and you look like a dumbass. And uh, Peter, he's really, his struggles are really resonating with me in this series. Radiant's top tower is in How long can Radiant's well, top tower take this? Radiant's to top tower is in the very disappointing uh, end to this game. Radiant's cause... middle tower is under attack. Hey, you know, people keep on picking this up. Super Godlike! Beyond Godlike, your man! He's going to do something amazing. He's playing right next to the tier 4s. Maybe they can actually win a fight. Even though the fight's still out, Miracle somehow is still alive. Won't take it to shrink. He's turning to the dead. Beyond Godlike! Oh dear, GG. Tundra! Oh,